Okay, quick disclaimer. Uh, this is a real spicy video. <laughs> Um, maybe I just won't turn on monetization for this one, so if you feel like supporting me, hit up the SFO Patreon, hit up the SFO Subscribe Star, press the YouTube Memberships button, maybe toss your Prime sub on my Twitch channel, because uh, I feel like I'm not getting paid for this one. In the past on this channel, when I've run out of time to do other types of videos, I've occasionally reviewed really weird subreddits on Reddit. Reddit is a cesspit, I know, we all know it. Naomi still insists on scrolling it every night in bed. I know I covered anti-work, because that was a... Uh... That was a whole thing. Where the contents of the sub itself was ridiculous. Where a bunch of people were just, like, not wanting to work. But also there was that weird story about how one of the moderators of anti-work, along with being a communist, also ended up being a molester. Who could have seen that coming? And also beyond that, there's that one hipster sub where people never, uh, serve food on their plates. I think I covered that too. Man, blast from the past. And today, I just only have a few minutes, so we're gonna look at another sub. Dude, just like TikTok Tuesday, should I make, like, uh, a subreddit? day oh how, how about subreddit saturdays oh that could be a new series guys just just kill me now we are looking at r slash men camp uh, men camp guys men camp a journey into hippocrazy in the post you're about to make replace terms such as cis white hetero male with holocaust victim related terminology and if the result sounds like it could have be right out of mind camp you should probably reconsider your social justice blogging habits so basically this is a sub about hypocrisy and let's see what we have i looked at a few of these already when a fan had directed me here let's just take a quick look at them here progressive rhetoric this is from Mary Daly, a radical feminist philosopher. If life is to survive on this planet, there must be a decontamination of the earth. I think this will be accompanied by an evolutionary process that will result in a drastic reduction of the population of Jews. <laughs> of Jews. People are afraid to say that kind of stuff anymore. Now, this, this person's a feminist probably said males or men there. Yeah, males. Okay. I just realized, if I keep reading these out, I'm going to sound like hyper anti-semitic listen guys these aren't these aren't my quotes all right don't you dare clip me when mary daly here says that people are afraid to say that kind of stuff anymore i mean there seems to be a reason for that calling for the extermination of a group kind of fell out of style <laughs> non-jewish people are cleaner oh oh jesus i'm noticing that it is more common for non-jew and non-semitic people to take cleanliness more seriously I'm Semitic, but my mother is Aryan, and I grew up with outside clothes, inside clothes, baths before bed, outside shoes, lift at the door and switched for, for inside shoes, die hard, hand washing, no pets in the kitchen. A lot of Jews and Semites I've known have found it weird or excessive or not a big deal. I wonder what, what group they're talking about at this point. This might be like, like Americans, you know, like they're talking about Americans. That kind of makes sense. I know Americans sometimes will like wear shoes on inside. It's kind of weird. We don't do that in Canada. Okay, here's the original source. Oh, it's non-white and non-Western people. Okay, so this is like, this is like, like a third world or shitting on the first world. Okay, I got it. A lot of whites and Westerns I've known has have found it weird or excessive. Oh, this is from a Japanese sub. Okay, yeah, they're very strict about like no shoes inside. You know, fair enough. So are we here in Canada, but like they're even more strict about it and having, you know, baths before bed all the time. We tend to shower in the morning, you know. Not all of them are bad, but 99.99% are. Fuck, I hate Jewish people. Don't make me say this! And of course it is, fuck, I hate white people. Wait a minute, this dude... This dude looks like he could be white. Like, maybe he's... Maybe he's Arabic, but I think he's white. This is just one of those, like, self-hating whites. Also, this emo-ass video, Jesus. But yeah, imagine saying this about any other race. You would be strung the fuck up by the progs. Jews who hate Aryans hate them because of Jewish hegemony. <laughs> oh my lord! Aryans who hate Jews also hate them because of Jewish hegemony. <laughs> Aryans who hate Jews want to break free from Jewish oppression. Jews who hate Aryans want to be free to oppress them. You can't win, can you? <laughs> Either way. This one's a gender one, though. Men who hate women hate them because of misogyny. Women who hate men also hate them because of misogyny. Women who hate men want to break free from male oppression. Men who hate women want to be free to oppress them. This positions the conversation such that all men always oppress all women. The only reason a man would want to be free is to be an oppressor, while women want to be free from oppression. They can't conceive of the fact that women want to oppress as well, and they do, because they're humans. Men who hate women only do so because of misogyny, but women who hate men 
well, they're a victim probably of male violence or something. And so it's the misogyny that makes them hate them. The entire framing of the conversation is such that men are the source of evil. They are the fountain from which evil springs. Women are simply corrupted by it and otherwise they would be innocent. Now, of course, once you start applying this idea to other groups, the whole thing falls apart. As the alternative interpretation points out, imagine if you said that Jewishness was the source of all evil and that non-Jews were corrupted by Jews to be evil while Jews were in inherently evil. It would be ridiculous. It's a ridiculous statement. All undermen, all untermention, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> all untermention are gone. Usually this is conceived as the result of a plague. Less often the cause is violence. Occasionally, the undermentioned don't die, and the races are just segregated in different geographical reasons. Or undermentioned miraculously vanish with explanation. Left to themselves, the Aryans create a better society without inequality or war. All goods are shared, all children are safe, the economy is sustainable, and the earth is cherished. Without inferior biology standing in their way, Utopia builds itself. This is actually what the Nazis believed. Like, word for word, this was their thousand-year Reich view of the future. And of course, this is actually a, a feminist separatist thing. All the men are gone. Usually this is conceived as the result of a plague. Less often the cause is violence. Occasionally the men don't die and the sexes are just segregated in different geographical regions. Or men miraculously vanish without explanation. Left to themselves, the women create a better society. Without inequality or war, all the goods are shared, all children are safe, the economy is sustainable, and the earth is cherished. Without male biology standing in the way, utopia builds itself. If this were the case, you would definitely have seen over the course of human history, matriarchies outcompeting patriarchies. Of course, their answer is going to be something like real matriarchy has never been tried, but it has been tried. This idea that human history has only been a patriarchy is, is nonsense. Various social structures have sprung up that are matriarchal. The issue is they tend to get outcompeted and then either absorbed or destroyed by patriarchies around them. If they were competitive, they would still exist. Which leads to a very strange point, because if you were to apply those to, say, racial struggles the way that the Nazis actually do, it makes sense that the various races that exist, they exist because they outcompeted their competition. If there actually were an inferior race of people, it seems to be the case that they would have died out without the Nazis trying to, you know, push it along a whole bunch. New Year's resolutions. Cultivate Aryan friendships and band together to kill off. <laughs> oh my fucking god. This video is going to probably like single-handedly end my channel. Why do I agree to do this? Oh, Jesus. Emily McCombs. She's a Huffington Post editor. The fact that the political camp that hates bigotry above all else, they'll support mass murderers before they support bigots. That they carve out a space where they can be bigoted towards specific groups of people because they are the groups that they hate. The Kill All Jews movement. <laughs> God, the kill all Jews movement has never actually meant kill all Jews. It's a hyperbole and a response to anti-Aryanism. I recommend researching the movement and what it's actually about, but I personally almost never see people saying that. The only time I see Aryans say that is when Jews are blatantly anti-Aryan and hateful. But again, it doesn't actually mean they want to kill all Jews. Oh my God. Of course, this is about kill all men, misogyny, women aren't saying that. I think there was a thing floating around in feminist spaces like 10 years ago or something, at least on the internet, where they were saying things like, the reaction to feminism shows why we need feminism. And it's like, no, what if you're actually acting terribly and people are reacting the way that they should to your terrible behavior? You won't let us take over and control everything? You won't let us just exterminate you? Well, that proves that we have to. It's like, what the fuck? Basically, they actually believe themselves to be superior and they're being unfairly held down and so all of their hyperbole, all of their oppression, their desire for violence, this is just a restoration of what is to them the natural order. Do something with your life that will make a mediocre Jew angry. What are we talking about? Late night TV show hosts now? Of course, the original shirt said a mediocre white man. If you actually wear this shirt outside, it's the equivalent of like wearing a feminist armband or something. If I saw a person like this walking around in real life, I would just like, I would be disgusted, all right? I would just avoid them. I'd be like, what the fuck? Jesus Christ. Dude, a new study just dropped. Jews, Aryans, and optimal violence. <laughs> While both Jews and Aryans can and do use violence against each other, Jews' violence against Aryans is far more common, less justified, and more destructive than Aryans' violence against Jews. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Please, please, YouTube, have mercy. 
The distribution of violence between the races, then, is suboptimal. Society would be better off as a whole if more Aryans were willing to engage in justified violence against Jews and fewer Jews were willing to engage in unjustified violence against Aryans. To that end, Aryans' justified violence against Jews should be encouraged, protected, and publicized. Oh my... Fi like, I know they're obviously talking about men and women here, right? So they're saying that women's justified violence against men should be encouraged, protected, and publicized. Even if encouraging an increase in women's justified violence against men may sometimes result in unjustified or disproportionate violence in individual situations, the overall effects of the redistribution of violence will be preferable to the current asymmetry. So these people are saying that we should normalize women being violent against men, even if it's unjustified sometimes, because overall men are more violent against women and we need to equalize it. Man, I'm already dismayed at just the state of humanity. <laughs> Racism, sexism, bigotry, these things are never actually stamped out the way that progressives believe they were. They've simply crafted what they believe to be a moral outlet for them. They have simply defined a new outgroup for them to shit on and oppress. As much fun as it is talking about the hypocrisy, there is probably a more real conversation you can have here. For example, any sort of intrinsic differences between, let's say, black men and white men as two distinct classes. It's going to be very small compared to the intrinsic differences between males and females. I don't even know how much of this stuff is you know, directly based on race, directly based on genetics. What I do know is that a lot of the differences between males and females are based on biology. And that seems to be not the case when it comes to different races or different ethnicities of people. So you could actually make the argument that when these messages that we've gone over today talk about the differences between men and women, assuming that they're talking about males and females here. We're not going to bring some trans stuff into it right now. Let's just say males and females. That might actually be a reasonable statement in a way that talking about, say, blacks and whites or Aryans and Jews or whatever the fuck, that's not a reasonable statement because race and sex are not the same thing. However, that is a position that a leftist can't really take up because they've already completely expelled biological essentialism from their vocabulary. Now, they're not going to care about the hypocrisy. Trust me, this entire video is showing off their hypocrisy. They're not going to care. But, and I'll have a future video that will really go into detail regarding essentialism, but basically, the radical left has gotten rid of essentialism. So, the argument that you're gay because you're born this way, if you actually talk to people on the left right now, They've completely abandoned that logic because they're full on blank slate theory. This is the same reason why they go for the full self ID justification when it comes to trans stuff. They do not believe that your biology has anything to do with who you are, because that would mean genetics, which would mean eugenics, and therefore you're a racist Nazi piece of shit. So everything can be socially constructed. We can change whatever we want of ourselves. And it's all a matter of simply liberating the mind from the prison that is our body. And if, you know, the biological reality of who we are gets in the way, then that is evil and bigoted. So while it turns out that dipping our toes into r slash men camp was kind of funny, there is an argument against the point of this sub. There does exist significant biological differences between males and females, so you can't simply compare rhetoric talking about males and females to rhetoric talking about races or ethnicities. But the left can't even access that logic because they've already expelled essentialism from their thinking. So the only thing that they can do is yell and scream that it's racist or bigoted or hateful or whatever, which frankly, I don't care about anymore because they're racist and hateful and bigoted. Anyway, that's that for today. I hope my channel doesn't get fucking nuked, but it was a fun time. I will see you guys later. I love you. Hey, Naomi. Yeah? I'm talking about your Reddit habit right now. What Reddit habit? The one that you have where you scroll for several hours in bed every night. Yeah, it helps me sleep. You mean it keeps you up? No, it helps me sleep. If I'm just mindlessly scrolling on Reddit, like, I, my brain just, like, slowly turns itself off because, like, oh, I don't kinda actually like, have to think when like scroll the, on Reddit. Kind of like that one time when I came to bed and you were like, I was awake! And I was like, you were fucking awake. <laughs>